Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. It's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to show you how to use the core trigger. And indeed, it's very special, particularly uh, if you use it together with the arpeggiator. So what does that mean? It means that you can press a single note and that note will produce a chord, which you define. And then you can also add on top of it an arpeggiator and therefore the arpeggiator will arpeggiate notes based on the chord that you've triggered using just a single key. And you can still, on top of that, play your own melody using uh, splits on your keyboard. So that is quite really nice. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Let's click Create Project. We are inside the Logic Pro 4 iPad on an iPad Pro M1. Let's click on Tracks and let's select a MIDI software instrument. So we have here a, a MIDI track with a software instrument default patch. Something nice and simple. Now let's open the plugin editor and let's click on MIDI effect and let's choose chord trigger under arpeggiator uh, on the category of Logic Pro. As you can see, uh, we have loaded up the um, effect. You have only one exposed parameter here, which is transposition. If I press a um, um, note here, you can hear he's playing a chord. It's nice. And if I transpose, I can transpose the chord up and down. Of course, you might be thinking, what's so special? Well, let's double click on the chord trigger and let's go through all the different parameters. First of all, you can be in single mode or multi mode. In single mode, you only record one um, chord uh, against one uh, trigger note or trigger key. And then, of course, that will be um, spread around the range here, which is defined here. In multi mode, you can find multiple chords, and that is really, really nice. So, how does it work? Click on learn. First of all, so we are in single mode, okay? Let's press a note. So, um, I should have said it's better you clear here and you can use clear to um, uh, the uh, to clear the uh, last uh, trigger note or clear all to clear them all if you were using multi-mode. So first clear everything, okay? So you don't have anything there, okay? Otherwise, when you press a note as I just done a moment ago, it will actually play the chord then click learn, then press a note, and then after that, press a chord, like, for example, an F uh, minor. Okay, when you've done that, the learn will, will be disabled automatically. Now, if I press the F key, I have an F minor chord. If I go up to G, I'll have a G minor chord. If I go up to A, I'll, and so on and so forth. Now, the transposition happens based on the trigger key note, which I've done that through the F key where I recorded the F minor chord. Now, in terms of range here, you, you can define it. So, for example, let's say that um, we go up to a maximum of 60, which is here. So, above that, it will just play a normal note. That means that I can happily pay, uh, play a melody on top with a chord below. Really, really nice. I can still do a chord transposition here. Okay. And then here I have the option to define what key I'm go you're going to use to activate learn on and off, which can become really handy. So learn remote and just use your dial here. Nice and simple. Now let's go to multi-mode. And this one I really like. Again, let's clear everything. Okay. Now, let's say that on F, I want an F major, on G, I want a G major, and then on A, I want an A minor. Okay, click Learn, then select F, then play an F major chord. Perfect. Okay, then next, select the G. Okay, G major. Then, uh, and, uh, oops, and uh, um, A, A minor. Okay, I might have pressed a couple of times uh, too much. Let's see. Yeah, perfect. It works absolutely fine. Okay, so we are from 53 to 57 as a range. So let's play. As you can see, I'm playing only three notes on the bass here, and it plays 
three different code, like a code progression, but you can control that as you like. And this is for me where the magic happens because then you can add also an arpeggiator on top, right? And open your arpeggiato. And we have seen already how uh, the different parameters that you can use inside it uh, through a previous tutorial, but you know, you can just say, latch here and then define a keyboard split so that it doesn't go for example above uh, 60 61 2 3 64 okay so you have that uh, um chord represented in terms of a minor here and have fun <laughs> Of course, I pressed the E here, that is why it started to arpeggiate. Now, the other thing, of course, as you know from previous tutorial, you can activate grid here, and then you can choose a pattern, and again, that is fabulous. <laughs> Again, of course, if you go back to the uh, arpeggiato tutorial, you can create a further split, and therefore you can have a bass um, um, uh, on the lower part of, uh, for example, the keyboard, and um, or it, which is playing an arpeggiato. You can have another part, for example, another zone where you have a another instrument, another keyboard instrument, for example, which is playing a chord for which you might have an arpeggiato again. And then on top, you can still play your own melody. So I hope you agree with me that this is fantastic. It's just uh, like having, uh, you know, an arranger inside, uh, some of the features of an arranger inside, uh, of course, uh, uh, Logic Pro for uh, iPad. Okay, I'm going to stop here. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And as always, see you next time. Bye.